All right, well, welcome to a quick online lecture to provide a, an overview of the SFMA uh, process. Uh, I am certified in this method, and it's a system that I think has a lot of value and a lot of usefulness. Um, what I'd like to start off by mentioning is that there are different uh, versions of this released over the years. Uh, for this one, I'm going to be using the most recent version that's uh, labeled version 25.6. Uh, and this is going to include the top tier movements from the 2018 uh, version. Overall, there are many different movement systems out there. Uh, what I like to point out is that uh, it's sort of like the different softwares that are out there for, for different things. So let's say you're gonna make a presentation. You have options, you have PowerPoint, and that's a, a movement system with its own icons and terminology for that. You have Google Slides, which is a slightly different system. You have for the Mac users, you have Keynote. And even though all these systems do have their slight nuances and are different, they're still relatively the same and the product they produce is very similar, but they do have some differences. And for that reason, there are many different methods and paradigms out there for assessing movement. The SFMA is just one of those movement paradigms that, that makes sense to me and, and seems to fit my philosophy as well, but it's not the, the only movement system out there and there are many different other ones. However, I believe if you learn this movement system, it helps you learn other ones better. Just like if you learn PowerPoint and you know that software really well, then you can easily transition to using Google Slides or Keynote and vice versa. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how the SFMA approaches movement, and we're going to start talking about the uh, top tiers, 10 basic movements uh, for assessing patients and other individuals. So on the screen now, we have the top tier of the SFMA. And what this is, it's a, a list of 10 different items that each patient, client, athlete is going to go through for movement to see how they perform in these different movements. And then for each movement, they'll be classified as uh, an FN, FP, DP, or DN, and I'll explain what those are. But let me zoom in so we can talk uh, about these specific movements and how we examine them. All right, so the first three are gonna focus on cervical spine. These are all going to be assessed in a standing position, starting with cervical flexion, uh, the patient in standing with the feet together, Jaw clenched is going to be asked to take their chin down to their chest. Uh, the next one, they're going to be asked to look up towards the ceiling, and that's going to be graded for pain and for overall movement. They're then going to be asked to turn to the left and to the right, either order really, uh, it doesn't matter. So those three cervical movements are all going to be graded. Next thing, we're going to look at the shoulder uh, movement. We're going to look at with the hand open. Can they touch the opposite scapula uh, by reaching behind their back? And can they touch the opposite scapula reaching over their head, behind their head? And that's going to be done to the left and the right side. Either order could be done. And those are going to be performed in the standing position. Let me scroll down a little bit more. All right, so the next five uh, here the more global movements. So we're going to look at multi-segmental flexion. Uh, so what that's going to be is the patient's going to be standing and they're going to be asked to stand with their feet together, a barefoot if possible, and bend forward towards the floor as far down as they can reach. That's going to assess a lot of the posterior chain uh, length and elasticity. And then in the standing position, they're going to do uh, arms overhead and trying to reach backwards into extension uh, throughout the spine and overall and range shoulder flexion as well. Also gonna be looking at multi-segmental rotation, so standing feet together, can they turn all the way to the left and to the right, either order for that. Balance is gonna be assessed next. Uh, and there's been some changes to how this is performed. Uh, the video will show a little bit more about this. And then with the last version, there was some debate about this one, but they did change the overhead squat now to uh, arms down deep squat. So it used to be the feet were separated, but now you can see the feet are together and they're doing a deep squat, uh, arms down to the sides. And those are the 10 different uh, movements as part of the top 10 or the, uh, the 10 tiered movements. 
So now that we've gone over the 10 movements, let's talk about one of the keys to grading these is going to be by placing them into the different categories. So when someone's asked to do these movements, one of the first things they can do is be able to perform that functionally without any pain. And that's the ideal response you would like for all of these. If that's the category, they would be placed as a functional non-painful or an FN. You'll see that's designated as red, which basically means that's good. You can stop. You don't have to further explore that. They don't have any pain and they have full function. So that is a good sign. So even though red sometimes means not good things, in this case, it means don't explore that any further. Let's look at the other categories between the FPs, DPs, and DNs. So for the next category, what is functional painful? So they could be functional, which means they have full range of motion. However, the movement pattern is painful. So that would be your FP, uh, which is similar to your DP. And that, that's another scenario where they do have pain. However, this time it's dysfunctional, meaning they don't have the full range of motion or they perform it with abnormal mechanics or altered rhythm in some way. So that would be your DP and FPs right there. And then you have your last category, your DNs. And so this means they are dysfunctional and that they don't have the full range of motion or normal mechanics as they do this. However, they are non-painful. And so this is your D and and this one you'll notice is in green, uh, which means this needs further explored. Uh, so this is a really important category to pay attention to. And even if you're seeing a patient, for example, they have a diagnosis or they have reports of cervical pain, they may test uh, abnormal in even a multi-segmental extension or rotation as uh, here. Whereas in some of the other categories, they might test as dysfunctional painful here, dysfunctional painful there. And what this would indicate is that we're gonna to wanna to start here where they have no pain, but altered function. And so that might be some type of motor control or other mobility issue that we have to further explore. And with this, there's a name for things that we further explore, especially for their DNs. These are called breakouts. So with these breakouts, that's where we further explore and get ideas about what to do with each of these different abnormal movement patterns, whether it's due to pain or altered function. And in the breakouts, there's a series of flowcharts or algorithms that you can use on each of these tiers. And usually gonna start with one at a time, but there may be multiple breakouts you have to perform for any uh, given individual. So what are the next steps to learn a little bit more uh, about this, this model and this, this process? Uh, well, one thing uh, you can do next is there's a uh, summary uh, guide that contains both the SFMA and FMS. Uh, you wanna look through that to get familiarized with some of the terminology uh, associated with that. And then also, there is the 2018 version of the SFMA manual, and you'll see the, the breakouts are, are listed on there and um, some of the terminologies uh, and special testing and other things are located uh, within uh, this manual, as well as the functionalmovement.com website. They also have some blog articles, videos, and other things that are really good just to get an overview of what the FMS and SFMA systems are all about. In addition to that, I am, let's see if this works right, I'm going to try and post a, another YouTube video right here, over here in this section, and you should be able to click somewhere over here and see a uh, quick video. It's about four minutes. Uh, however, it was in 2011, uh, so some of the tests are slightly different, but it gives you a nice overview of how quickly you can have uh, someone perform the top tier movements, and you can also rank them. And, uh, and see how you would grade each one of those. And I think that will be 
helpful, then we'll definitely do more things in class and in lab. Uh, that's it for the overview of the SFMA, and we'll get going with this uh, next time. Thank you.